This is Ground Affected. My name is your dad, and welcome to Still Sucking at Supports, but today I'm going to help you. In this video, I'm going to go over my support settings. A couple of people have been asking if they've changed over the years, and I'm just going to tell you exactly what I'm doing with my supports. More importantly than actual supports, in my opinion, is actually the resin. And this is not only because of how it's going to print, but more importantly, how it's gonna last after you've printed it. I've seen people mention models being destroyed by the soccer games that FedEx and USPS love to play when you send models through them. Now, something that hasn't changed at all for me during my entire process, I still use Nova 3D resin, the standard gray version. It's ideal, it's perfect, it's amazing. It's just a little bit expensive. The only thing I will say is that this stuff need something to make it a little bit less brittle. And in comes Soraya Tech Tenacious. Take some of this, throw it into this, and you've got magic in the bottle. Yes! The way that I mix this is super easy. When I get a brand new bottle of the Nova 3D resin, I will take this bottle of Tenacious, give it a shake like this, and I will take the bottle of Nova and fill up the rest just to below the top. You don't want to fill it all the way because all the way and you won't be able to shake it like that. And then you shake it and then you shake it more and you shake it over here. And when you're done shaking it, shake it a little bit more. So for me, that Nova resin with the tenacious mix is a super ideal mix. It's the best thing I've ever used. Honestly, I've even made tank tracks with it and the treads don't pull apart. They work great. I think it's one of the best, honestly, the best thing I've found in 3D printing so far. Now, if you're anything like me, you maybe had some troubles when you first started out and you probably struggled with supports. In fact, if you're still in that situation, I might just help you right now. Stop whatever you're doing and just download Leechy. I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't support to save my life. I had no idea what the hell this thing was about and I couldn't grasp the concept until I downloaded Leechy. Do you need the pro version of Leechy? No, you don't actually. I used the free version for a good few months and it worked out really well for me. I just figured that I've been using it for so long, I might as well just pay for the pro version at this point. So I'm not gonna waffle anymore. Make sure to leave a like on the video, leave some words in the little square box down below for the uncle algorithm. And let's just get straight into, uh, have I changed anything with my updates of my support things? Right, so in order to show you how I'm gonna support this model, only because I don't wanna sit here and support an entire model, because that would take really, really long. So I'm gonna show you on this model just how I would support this, and during that support process, I will show you all of my support settings and everything that I have in Leechy that I've set up already. Now, of course, I must say this is the pro version, so I have paid to be using this version. And if you use Leechy at first, you don't have to pay. You can still slice, you can still do 99% of the things. Yes, you can't hollow as easy and blah, 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 but it doesn't really matter. I used that for many months and eventually I decided I wanted the pro version just because I knew I'm gonna be printing a lot and it's actually worth it. Like, honestly, it is so worth it. This is the best money spent in 3D printing so far, other than to put Soraya Tech mixed into my Nova that that's a whole thing all on its own. So the first thing I'm gonna do when I get a model into Leechy is I'm gonna actually orientate this piece in the way that I think will print best. It's a face, so of course we do not want the face to be at the bottom. We wanna make sure that the face is getting its cleanest, crispest print that it possibly can get. And in this case, we can see also that the hair is gonna cover up any mess. So if let's say there is a load of support marks on here, it's not really the end of the world. As long as we can make sure that the shape fits into the shape of the other part, then it doesn't really matter. You can go wild supporting on that. Really, if you wanted to, you could probably support this entire model upside down. But the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do it like this. This is how I normally print heads. I find that it tends to give the least amount of lines in the face. You're still gonna get some lines, like in general around on these top surfaces, here where the print kind of makes those like circular lines on the forehead and on the nose and things like that. But it's much easier to sand off these extremities than it is to sand inside lips and underneath sides of noses and in ears. And so I'd rather try and aim for that print line to be somewhere that is easier to get access to. Once I've got the model where I think that the orientation is right. Now, this is gonna change for everybody. A lot of people are gonna do it in a way that they think might fit better for their model. Also, it might change according to what you're trying to fit on a build plate. Sometimes the ideal position is not really the ideal position. If the model was sticking out of your build area, there is no reason 
to try anymore. You might as well just at that point try to fit it to your build area and from there you're just gonna have to deal with whatever you have to deal with after that. Obviously, everybody's printers are different sizes. You get small, medium, and large ones. Some of us are building and painting large scale statues up to quarter scale. Some of us are only making one tenth scale and even miniatures. So this is gonna change according to whatever you're doing personally. A lot of this information is personal because your machine and my machine are two different machines, even if we have the exact same machine. So take everything I'm saying in this video, mostly with a grain of salt, but also use this to help you just be a bit more knowledgeable about how you're supporting models for your own 3D printing. My next step, once I'm now happy with the orientation of my model, is gonna be 3D hollowing. Now, if you have not got the pro version, you would probably have to do this 2D hollowing. Of course, you can still do everything, it just means that you don't get to see where it's gonna hollow. Which is helpful to see it, but it is still very possible to do this without even being able to see it as well. So I'm gonna do 3D hollowing and I'm gonna drop my thickness. Since this is a head, it's not necessarily a load bearing part and it shouldn't really come into much pressure from the rest of the model. So I'm gonna do it at 2.2 millimeters. Make sure to select the item, click add update. What this will do is will hollow your item. If you are printing in clear and you want this to look nice and smooth on the inside, I don't know how to do that. All I know is that if you are printing clear and you try to hollow it out and you want it to look smooth inside, this program will not do that for you. It will print with facades. You will have facets all over the place. There will be places that you've never seen in your life before with angles that you couldn't imagine. So if anybody knows how to do that, then you might want to leave that in the comments down below. The next step after making sure that it's hollow, we're gonna make sure to check that by rolling the slider on the side and we can see everything is hollow. There is nothing weird, no awkwardness. It is great. We're ready to put in the holes. Now remember when you're printing something, there is a lot of forces being pulled on this model as well as on the FVP sheet and all over the place. So you wanna make sure that you have got a way to relieve that pressure. And the way that you do this is by adding holes. Now, holes also have two purposes. Not only are they there for relieving the pressure and making drainage, a lot more easier when you want to clean your model up but in my case i'm going to use these holes as the basis for which i'm going to use magnets to keep this model together this is the step where if you want to put magnets in your model do this it will save you hours when you're done printing so usually i will just eyeball this it doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect getting it perfect is ideal but it doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect now i'm probably not going to use magnets to stick on her hair but i will use a large size hole anyway just to make sure that there is a flow through throughout the entire model also because i want to make sure that i'm gonna make sure to guarantee that this has still got good airflow so the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to add some slightly smaller diameter holes just underneath the neck here but you can't just click and change them because lychee will change all of your holes and you don't want to do that so what to do is click away from everything then you will then uh, click on the model again and you will select the size of the diameter of the hole that you want the new one and then you're able to freely place the holes that you want to place all about the model. A quick note about placing these holes. If you are a commission painter and your customer is expecting a really awesome, amazing painted model, you might want to explain to them why you have holes in it because sometimes they might complain about it. So what I like to do is I try to make sure that these holes are at least placed so that it looks like it was part of the model. You don't want to just have them all over the place so they look really untidy and just awkwardly placed everywhere because this will make your model look like it was just done by a five-year-old. You want to try and make them look as tidy as possible. That way, there'll probably be less questions asked when your client receives that model. A very important place to relieve is obviously at the bottom. You want to make sure that anything that starts off with a little cave is gonna have some kind of airflow going to it because this is just gonna make sure that you're not gonna have anything stuck to your FVP sheet at the end of this. Once I've got all those holes placed in place and I'm happy with how it looks, the next step is obviously gonna be now to actually support this model. So I'm gonna click on the supports tab. I'm gonna make sure I've selected the model. I'm gonna click on utilities and lift it by five millimeters. The reason for five millimeters, this is how much space roughly that you need to be able to space 
at least the smallest support in and give it enough space for the whole tip and cone and everything to be involved. Once you've got that done, you need to click on islands and then select island detector and search. My accuracy is detailed. This is gonna change according to what you're doing. You don't have to change it, but I usually use detailed because I'm pretty good at finding most of the islands that I need to find. One of the things about 3D printing is that because you are able to blow this model up to about this big on your screen, that in your mind, this thing is this big. So that tiny little island always needs to be supported. That's not entirely true. You don't always have to support every little island. In fact, there is a lot of models where I don't even support up to a hundred of islands. I'm actually printing a model right now where there was a load of islands all around the little areas where the pieces joined together and I didn't support a single one of them. And this is not because I'm crazy, but in fact, a lot of the time that these things are so small that when they are printing next to each other, they would probably touch the piece that's just underneath it. You can see a gap, but in reality, that gap is microns of a millimeter thick. Chances are it wouldn't even matter. Obviously, make sure you've got all the supported islands that you need to get. The main ones are most important. Obviously, the strength to hold it down. And the rest is just kind of assisting the model to print so that it doesn't print out all wonky. Now, the next step is pretty simple, really. Basically, you need to now go and add supports to all of those little islands that this computer has told you to add supports to. Now, you could be crazy and go around this whole model and click each and every single little island. But let me show you a little trick that Leechy has given us. At the bottom here of the island tab, all you gotta do is click add support to all islands. And this adds supports to all the islands. Imagine that. Now, obviously, this is not enough support to print this model. As we can clearly see by our eyeballs, that is going to fail even on a good day. So what we need to do now is go through each support that has been added and just check roughly, does it need more anchoring? And are there any parts next to or around it that need to be supported as well? So always on corners and the part of the model that is going to start printing, I usually like to place quite a few supports. And this is just because this is going to anchor it like really, really well. A lot of people will use in this case, large or heavier supports. I just find that the heavy supports seem to damage the models and it's not worth fiddling with them, especially trying to get them off as well can be a bit of a nightmare. So I just use a crap load of medium supports. Does this have to be pretty? No, it does not. All you want to try and do is put the supports in places that once you have got the model together, you won't see the damage that has been made. But at the same time, you also are going to make your life easier cleaning this up. The last thing you want to do is put supports in places where it's really difficult to sand, because if you do that, you're going to have a bad time. Stuff like this here, they've put this yellow stuff around that's because this is telling you what is facing the build plate. This is telling you everything that will have a stress on it when it is being printed. So these parts, something like this little piece in the ear will be okay. But this little section of the ear here is probably best just to give it some support as it's moving along so that it doesn't fail in the last portions of that print. Around on the bottom corner here, you can see there is rather a large island that is gonna be printed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that that entire island has been supported. It looks crazy. Maybe people are gonna think I'm absolutely lost my marbles, but I don't really care. I've been printing now for a good while and most of my prints seem to come out pretty fantastic, even if I do have to say so myself. Now, one of the most amazing features that Leechy has added recently, which honestly has absolutely upped my game, it's just made this so much faster and less stressful for me. And that is this painting option. I don't know really what it's called, but I just know that you can now click with one click and drag your mouse around and you don't have to add every single support on, which on my life, I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the best things that Leechy has added to the system. It really, really makes things so much quicker and it just makes the whole process just feel less stressful for me. Now that I have this absolute mess of a support system on the bottom, I know for a fact that this is not gonna fail on the bottom. I know that this bottom is gonna hold on and I'll be happy with how easy it's gonna be to clean up those supports. Checking on the other ear, we can see it did want to support one there. So there's obviously an island. I'm going to just make sure that that whole island is supported all the way through up until when it joins the model. And at this point, we need to make sure 
that we have enough supports here as well. We'll check on the structure of those supports in a minute, but let's just make sure we have enough supports. Around the back of the head here, it is gonna be a part that is gonna be probably a little bit of pressure put on it just by being such a flat area. So I'm gonna add a load of supports there, and I'm also gonna add a load of supports here on the top of the head area here too. This is just gonna help stabilize and obviously give a good platform for the print to be printed straight off of. Now this looks like it will probably come out of my printer and not be a problem. However, you have previously hollowed this model, which means that this model has probably got some parts in it that need to be supported on the inside as well. It will tell you this once you do the search for the islands, but what I can say from my own experience is that you probably want to support some bits just inside this model, just to make sure that nothing is gonna collapse on you when you're printing this model. I know that most of the stuff will be fine, but you're never gonna see any of these supports anyway, so you might as well just go mad inside here. Obviously, this is gonna take up some of your resin, but a little bit more resin, at least your model's gonna freaking not fail and you're not gonna have tears and you're not gonna have to spend more money than necessary on printing this part. Again, this is where the paint feature absolutely shines. I can literally just hold down my mouse go around in here like I'm a freaking crazy person, let go, boom, everything's been supported. I'm pretty much happy with how that's supported. Maybe one or two more on the sides here, a couple over around in the back. Then we're gonna go back out again and we're gonna scroll this piece back down again so we can see the full model in its entirety. And we're gonna make sure to select everything. Once we've selected it all, we're gonna click on manual. And on manual, we're gonna click parent because we need parents for supports. Parent means that all the supports that are close enough to each other that can just be one support with two little arms sticking out, it will do this automatically for you. You can do that for yourself, but it does it for you. This is why I said Nietzsche is just so easy. It makes the whole process just 10 times easier. Once you've parented everything, this means you've cut down on the number of supports. You've kind of like cut back a little bit on the amount of resin that will be used to print those supports, obviously. The next thing you need to do is to add the bracings. That's right next to the parent button. And when you add the bracings, this is gonna make sure that those supports that are just kind of standing all by themselves will have something between them so they don't wobble on the way up. And as you can see, we have a wonderful bracing system. Everything seems to be looking in really good condition to me. I'm very happy with this. I know for a fact this will print really, really well. Nothing is gonna fail, at least on the outset, looking at it, it looks solid, it looks good, it looks like I will have great success. Now, the most important thing to not forget before you go out of this and start to actually export this to take it to your printer, and that's gonna be the raft. Everybody has their own idea on what they want their raft to do. My raft is functional for a very important reason. The reason why I use a specific raft and a specific thickness for that raft is because of my exposure settings. I have my bottom layers set to a certain number and I have my raft set to a certain number, meaning that when my exposures go through the raft, I only have a couple of layers on the raft that are actually exposed. And the first three or four layers of my actual supports are exposed at my lower exposure time. And this is, hopefully going to be giving me a little bit more strength to the bottom of those supports and stop some of those pesky ones that just seem to snap off at the end of the print you've got a whole print out and half the sports didn't come out i don't know if this is the reason but in my experiments and messing around with things this has been what's fixed it for me and so that setting that i use in the raft is pixelate and after i've clicked pixelate i'm going to set my thickness down to 0.3 millimeters and I'll show you this in my settings when we get to that, but that's pretty much what I'm gonna do there. And this model is now ready for exporting. Before we go to export, I'm gonna quickly show you my settings again. As you noticed, I only used medium supports for this entire model, but I will show you all my other support settings so you can decide if any of them are important to you. I do use the heavies and I do use the lights. Very rarely though, I will usually use lights if I need to support something very small. Mostly use the mediums to support it and lights just to support printed areas that I don't wanna get damaged but do need to have a support on them. So these are the settings for my light support settings. And these are the settings for my medium support settings. And then this is the settings for my heavy settings. 
Of course, you can change these to whatever you think works best for you. This works great for me. Hopefully, if you try any of these, let me know how it works. Of course, as you can see my supporting style, it means I use a lot of supports. That's why I use the mediums a lot, but I will use a bazillion of them because I'd rather have the model come out than be in pieces and waste my resin. But at the same time, those mediums aren't too harsh that they leave major divots in the model. They do leave some small marks, but they're really easy to sand out. Now, the next thing you're gonna need to do is take this into the export. And the easiest way I can explain this to you is you just click export, basically. But make sure when you're doing the export of this, you wanna make sure you've selected, first of all, the correct printer. These are all the printers that I have set up on my machine and I make sure that I've selected the correct printer. Once I've selected that printer, I have different settings that I have worked on for my own particular means. And basically all my printers have had extensive time on them where I've figured out what works, what doesn't work. Recently I moved to a new space and moving to that new space, the temperatures were very different. My printing room at the moment is three degrees Celsius, which means that my old settings where it was printing at 15 to 20 degrees is definitely not gonna work. It's not because you can't do it, it's just because there are settings that need to change in order to make it be possible. Now, of course, increasing the exposure is gonna overexpose, possibly lead to loss of detail. And so in a cold environment, it's usually best to raise the temperature just so that you can keep your exposure settings to a good area. If you go too low in the temperature, you have to go higher in exposure to make sure to keep temperatures as well as expose and harden enough resin but the problem is you start to lose details. So this is where you kind of like have to balance things and make sure that the temperature in your room is gonna work and balance with your exposure settings that you are using. If you are struggling with printing and things are just failing all the time, nine times out of 10, it comes down to those exposure settings. Those times are super important. Of course, just increasing the temperature in your room might help a lot of people, but that didn't cut down to the root of the cause, which is probably the exposure settings. And this is where you need to spend the most time. Couple of hours just setting and making sure that your settings are right. Printing a couple of Amerilabs towns and whatever you need to print. I have a couple models that I'll do Amerilabs towns and then I'll print a model just to be sure that my settings are good. And after that, you're good to go. So once you've made sure you've chosen the correct printer, you're gonna obviously then click to export and you're gonna then place that into a folder onto your SD card and you're gonna run to your machine and you're gonna stick the SD in. I hope that this video helped you with your support. I hope that you are now a little bit more confident to actually start supporting by yourself and not rely on all the supports that you can only get if things are supported. Of course, I wanna say a super special thank you to my Patreons for their support because without their support, I couldn't be showing you videos about supports. Also, without the Patreons, I wouldn't be able to use this light to blind my eyeballs when I make videos. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you will know that we are at my favorite part of the video. And this is where I get to tell you, if you didn't like anything you saw in this video, then the easiest thing I can say, just f off. Imagine if that print fails now, then I'm gonna look like a real idiot.